I hope this finds you doing well. I wanted to take a few moments to share some thoughts about uh, this church and what the fall is going to look like here. Uh, I have worked with other pastors looking at what is reasonable, what is possible, and what makes sense for our rural Missouri context. And uh, these, uh, this plan has been made with the following assumptions. Uh, first, that uh, we do not expect a vaccine to occur this year. Uh, we do continue. Uh, we, we assume that the Missouri uh, number of cases will continue to grow, and that has been borne out over the last uh, week of following the number of cases per day increase uh, each day, and that we will find our way back to something we're going to call normal, but it's not going to be in 2020. What we're kind of entering into it, and how I understand this year is sort of the third phase. It was the, the first sort of like March to Easter moment where we were like, oh, what's happening? And then after Easter, we kind of settled into figuring out, okay, here's how we're going to take this seriously so that we can gather and do so safely. And now as we head into the fall, schools will reopen. Uh, we're, again, a little bit more activity. Uh, here's how we have some some activity and do so in a way that is very conscious about the needs uh, to keep each other uh, safe, to love our neighbor the, in a very practical way, i.e. not infect them. Uh, so here is what I see as being the areas that are impacted by uh, the COVID-19 virus and how we'll be responding. Uh, discipleship of adults. I want to invite people in the church to consider who they are willing to meet with uh, this fall. It, it could be just one other person. It could be another family. It could be a family gathering amongst itself. Whatever it is, uh, please look around and decide who uh, are you willing to gather with on a weekly basis, whether it be weekly for a month, weekly for two months, weekly for the rest of the, the year. Um, and, and then let me know, let the church know, and that what what you would like to do a, as a group. And, and I will present a few different options. There is a, a Bible study called Disciple Fast Track that is a video-based thing that uh, doesn't really need a leader. It just needs someone willing to hit play and then read out a book and say, and here's what we're going to do next. So there's that. Um, there is something called Faith Link, which is a set, a top, set of topical discussions, and, and you pick the topic. I'll give you the web page or the list of topics. You pick the topics that interest you as a group, and then you chew on them. And it's a Methodist-written uh, topical thing looking at what does Scripture say, what do we think about this. Uh, I think it's kind of interesting, personally. Um, there is something called the Faith and Race Podcast. Following the death of Michael Brown and Ferguson in 2014, the Missouri Conference put together a set of interviews and discussions with Methodist pastors and lay people here in Missouri uh, responding and trying to hash through this. So, and uh, someone I greatly respect, Cody Collier, is, gives the first, there are two seasons of this podcast, uh, the first one is by uh, an interview with Cody Collier who uh, just discusses, like, why do we need to talk about this? So I think any of these options are, are, are worth uh, doing. And if there's another option I'd like to pursue, the, the, the concern is I want to make sure that we continue being grounded in, in learning and following Jesus together. When it comes to the discipleship of youth, the youth group, um, we're going to follow the lead of the school. However the school approaches this, that we're going to do the same thing from 3.30 till 5 and, and, and do the same thing with youth. Uh, we're going to modify our schedule a little bit. We're going to uh, cut it short to 5. Um, and, and so we think that's going to work. I'm in conversation with uh, uh, Mrs. Hanlon, with um, Jim Hanlon, and we'll, we'll get that for, sorted out. Uh, worship. Our current approach is rooted in the best practices for keeping people safe. We either worship outside, distanced, no masks and singing, or inside with masks, minimal singing, and high airflow. Uh, what we can do once it begins to get cold, and what we're looking into is installing high efficiency filters and UV light um, in the return ducts that as long as we have airflow, then we will have an HVAC system that 
will actively strip and kill viruses, strip viruses out of the air and, and kill them. And so we will, and then we will still need to use masks, uh, but we will be able to go inside and not have to use fans. Uh, and I think that will help us greatly. Um, I expect that masks will continue to be a necessity until either there is a vaccine or this pandemic is truly brought under control. We, we will get to a point where we do not have to wear masks in worship again, but the criteria for when we do that is pretty straightforward. It is my understanding that there either needs to be a vaccine or we need to not be in a situation of increasing spread. <laughs> When it comes to service to our community, uh, this is where I am particularly frustrated. Uh, I'm frustrated by all of this. This is where I'm particularly frustrated because we have had some projects that we have been working with and towards to build, and, and this is, they all kind of got shot, right? Uh, we, we're gonna have our second year of a big fish fry in Shalbina, uh, Shindig over in Honeywell, and we were getting moving and we were getting traction on them, and. Uh, I was excited for them, and we're just not going to be able to do them. Uh, we were beginning to this process of being able to read in the schools and, and serve our school, and that's also completely off the table for right now. So, um, in as much as people still need to be helped, and we still need to be helping, uh, I would ask that we take the month of August and, and look around and see if there are opportunities that we might have to help our neighbors. Uh, and then bring them back to me and then we'll sit down and vet whether these are options that we can do safely. Um, I would like both churches, Shelbina and Honeywell, to have, we've got to have at least one thing we can do uh, this fall. Fellowship, I do not believe we can have any fellowship meals, any, anything like that. I think that uh, keeping up with each other after church at, at Honeywell, we just kick around outside where we already are and chat after worship. At, uh, here at Shelbino, we go out, after, go leave the sanctuary. Uh, we might be able to get some pop-up shelters put in place so that we have a little bit of shade to stay, stand under while we catch up after worship. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at. <laughs> Congregational care is being is continuing to be impacted. I have never felt so cut off from a church I've served ever in a decade and a half of service to churches. I, I, I am hearing less uh, just because I'm not going out into the community as much. I'm not running into people. We're not chatting as much during worship. I just, I feel very disconnected and I'm worried about... Uh, are there people that we need to be taking care of? And, and so I, I make phone calls as I am able to keep track of people. I would like to have uh, one or two people volunteer to help me to join in, in making some phone calls and in visiting people in the nursing home. Uh, Shelbina Nursing Home, we can now call ahead and schedule to go see people. And, and uh, I think we need to do that, um, especially because there's a time limit on how long we can do that. Uh, when it starts getting cold, they will not be able to bring people you can't bring an 85-year-old in a wheelchair into cold weather to visit. I mean, it's just not going to be possible. Um, and I'm worried about uh, our, our family in the nursing homes. Children, this is a real challenge. Keeping children in a pew during worship is always a challenge. And keeping them in a pew when we're trying to do social distancing, when we are doing social distancing, uh, is just hard. So... Um, Anyone who wants to bring children to worship is wonderful. We will do everything we can to make that possible. And if they can't keep masks on or they won't keep masks on, you know, we, the adults need to be the adults in the room and wear masks. And uh, we'll do the best we can with that. I don't see any way to reopen the nursery or begin Sunday school. Uh, we're going to look into can we send packets home. That's going to be one of the topics we'll look into this month. So those are kind of where we stand. Those are the topics, those are the aspects of our life together that are being impacted. Discipleship, worship, service, fellowship, congregational care, and children. So basically everything has been influenced. Um, if you want to know exactly what each person in the church can do, here it is. 
First, please continue to be flexible. Uh, second, look around at who you are willing to gather with this fall uh, and, and ask, like, would you be willing to get together uh, it, people who are approaching this similarly, taking the same safe, uh, taking the same type of a level of exposure as you are, uh, and then have that group get a hold of me and we'll figure out what material you would like to use. Uh, so first, flexible. Second, figure out who you'd like to study with and learn with. Third, look around and see who we might serve. Fourth, consider making some phone calls on behalf of the church. I will tell you exactly how, I mean, there's just, just a set of questions I gotta ask, like, how are you doing? What's going on? Like, this is not, it's not rock science, we're just checking in on people we care about. And finally, please continue to pray for me and for the leadership of the church and for the people leading in our community that we might continue to make wise decisions. Uh, thank you again. It is an honor to serve as your pastor. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, my front porch is always open. Come on by and we can sit out there and drink some tea or I'll come to your porch, whatever works. Thank you. Bye.